Many people feel like they're stuck in this rat race where you're going to work every single day just to earn money to pay your bills and you never have the chance to build any wealth for yourself. Well, in this video, I'm going to be going over how you can escape this rat race step by step. Most of us are not taught about financial education and money when we're young. What happens is most of us go to school for the first 17 or 18 years of our lives and then when we're 17 or 18, we say we want to become successful. And the way that you become successful is by going to college like everybody else. And so now you go to college, except college is expensive and so now when you're 17 or 18 years old you sign a piece of paper saying that you're signing yourself up for an unlimited amount of student loans and you don't really know what that means because you don't know how to manage debt you don't know what debt is you don't know how to really value a dollar because you haven't earned a dollar and so now you go to college you're having a lot of fun and now you're 21 years old you graduate college you got fifty thousand dollars worth of student loans and now it's time for you to get a job now you got your first job so you can finally start making money to pay off your education to get your job but in order for you to get to a from work you need a car and so you go to the car dealership and they say that you can buy this three thousand dollar car which you might be able to afford with cash assuming that you have a little bit of money left over but if you don't want to buy this three thousand dollar beat up car you can go over to the bmw dealership because now you got a brand new job and now you can finance a brand new four series you worked really hard to get this job but now it's time to finally start enjoying your life so now you start working and now you're using a lot of your paycheck to pay off your student loans and to pay off your car and that's when you meet somebody at work and you start to like him or her and now you decide to get married now you got to pay for your wedding you kept telling yourself that you were going to save more money and start investing your money but things keep coming up you got your car payment you got your student loan payment you got to pay a rent payment and now you got to start paying for this wedding and every time you got a little bit of cash your friends want to go on a vacation and so your money keeps disappearing and you keep trying to save some money you keep trying to invest some money but every time you got some cash something comes up well now you get married and now you and your spouse want to settle down and you got to go out and buy a home but in order for you to buy a home, you need to save up for a down payment. So now you take the rest of your savings and you use it to finally buy a home, which you think is an investment. So now you finally own a home and now you can finally settle down. Now you can finally start saving money and you can finally start investing money. Well, I guess not just yet, because now that you're married, you and your spouse want to go on a honeymoon. You want to go on a few trips with your friends. You want to go out on nice dinners. And so now you thought you'd finally have some more money because you have two incomes working in the same household, but you have more expenses. you got to go out to more dinners. you got to go on more vacations you got to go on more trips now a couple years go by and you finally are starting to settle down and really get into the swing of married life and now you really want to start saving money and you want to start investing money that way you can build your wealth and stop working so hard at your job because you feel like you're just kind of like running around in this wheel you keep making money and spending money and making money and spending money and now you got a little bit of credit card debt piled up too because you keep going on all these trips and your friends keep getting married and you have to keep buying everybody these gifts and you didn't have the cash to do that so you just put it on your credit card and a few other nice things that you wanted for yourself and your spouse so now you got a little bit of credit card debt you got your car loans you got your student loans you got your mortgage payment but now you're finally ready to buckle down save some money invest some money and build your wealth oops we just had a baby now your expenses have shot back up and you have no idea how you can escape this rat race where you're constantly working to pay all your bills you're working to pay off your expenses and you feel like you have nothing left for yourself that's why in this video i'm going to be going over three things that you need to do if you want to escape this rat race but before i get into that i need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below the first thing you want to do if you want to break out of the system is you got to stop living poor and when i say poor i don't mean physically like i don't have any money Money poor I mean mentally like I have a poor mindset poor this one might not seem that important but if you do not have the right mindset it will be impossible it will be impossible for you to ever build wealth because you don't believe it's possible for you I mean if you don't believe that you can do something you are not going to be able to do it it is going to be very hard for you to break out of this rat race if you are lazy and if you keep complaining instead of finding the opportunities in the world there are so many opportunities around us especially if you live in a first world country and if you have the means and the ability to understand what I'm saying. If you have a screen, a computer, a phone, and you can understand what I'm saying, you are blessed. You have everything that you need in order to become successful and you gotta stop complaining about what you don't have. If you keep complaining and you keep finding negativity and the problems with everything around you, you are never gonna find the opportunity that's around you. The biggest disability that you can have is a poor mindset because a poor mindset will stop you from achieving anything. Look, my grandparents were refugees in a state in India called Punjab. When our home state 
Punjab Punjab was severed by the government, my grandparents literally lost everything. They lost their homes, they lost their family, they lost their friends, they lost their money, and they had to literally run to a brand new home with nothing except the clothes on their back and a sword in their hand. By the time my grandfather made it across the border, he didn't even have shoes. He lost his shoes along the way, and he did not have the opportunity to take days off because if you took a day off, you would be killed. My parents are immigrants. They came to this country with next to nothing. My dad had less than $100 in his pocket. They didn't speak English, they didn't know the people, they didn't know the culture, they didn't know how the system worked in America, but they made it work. My dad used to always tell me that there was no such thing as sick days because if you take a sick day, you're not working. If you're not working, you don't get paid. If you don't get paid, you don't have money to eat. America is a land of opportunity. People will literally risk their lives to come to this country and yet you have people in this country that are complacent, that are just comfortable and then they have the opportunity to complain about what they have because they don't realize how good they have it. This is one of the reasons why I call it channel minority mindset because all success starts with their mindset. If you do not have a good mindset, if you don't have a positive and a forward thinking mindset, you will never have the opportunity or a chance to become successful because your mind has already shut down your success. So if you have a poor mindset, that's the very first thing you got to work on. If you do not have a good mindset, you will never have the opportunity to build wealth or escape the rat race. The second thing you got to do is you got to stop living a fake rich lifestyle. Here's the thing, your cars, your shoes, your clothes, your purses, your vacations, your dinners out. None of these things make you rich. None of these things are putting money in your pocket. They look cool, they make all of your friends jealous of you, and they look nice on social media, but none of these things are making you rich. All of these things are making everybody around you rich, but none of these things are putting money in your pocket. So before you start making everybody else rich, I want you to make yourself rich first. Look, I'm not saying you shouldn't go out to eat, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't go on vacation, but if you don't have any savings, and if you don't have any investments to your name, is it really worth it for you to go out and spend $3,000 to go on a four day vacation to the Bahamas? This is the time where you really gotta figure out what's important to you and what sacrifices you're willing to make. I used to tell all of my friends that I'm not gonna go on a vacation unless I get paid to go on vacation because I used to work with a bunch of different DJs and I don't wanna spend money traveling because I was so focused on using every penny that I could into my investments and into my savings so I can build my own wealth but I did get to travel because sometimes we would get booked to fly out to a different city or a different state and go perform over there. I think it was Dave Ramsey that first came up with this phrase, but you gotta act your wage. If you cannot afford it, if you don't have the money to do it, stop blowing your money and then complaining about why you're not wealthy. How many people do you know that are going on nice vacations, that have a nice home, that drive nice cars, that have Apple AirPods, that wear Lululemon leggings, that buy extra guac when they go to Chipotle, that also complain about how they don't have any money? A lot. All this stuff and all these things make you look rich, but they keep you broke. What I want you to do is I first want you to be actually rich and then once you're actually rich, then you can afford all these things and not worry about the price because you're actually rich. I want you to live in a nice home and drive a nice car and have nice things and go on nice vacations. I just want you to be able to afford it first. And one of the easiest ways to understand if you can afford something or not is just to follow our rule of five, which says if you cannot buy five of them, you cannot afford one of them. What that means now is if you wanna buy something that you do not need to survive, you gotta make sure you can afford it. And how do you know if you can afford it? Well, just check the rule of five. Now, the third thing that you gotta do if you wanna escape the rat race is you gotta start living like wealthy people. The thing that wealthy people understand is that you cannot become wealthy just through your hard work. Hard work is important, but you have to understand how to use your hard work to also work smart. You, me, and everybody else in the world only have 24 hours in a day and none of us can work all 24 hours. And so we have to be smart. If we all are given 24 hours, how can you get the most value out of your 24 hours? And how can you start extracting more value even without you physically working? This is what wealthy people have worked to master, and this is what you need to be figuring out yourself too. See, what all wealthy people understand is that there's two different kinds of money. You have active money, and then you have passive money. Active money is the money that you earn from going to your job or from running your business. This is the money that you have to physically work to earn. Passive money is the money that you do not have to work to earn. This is the money that your money is working to earn. And so what wealthy people do is they work hard here. They work hard to generate this active money and anytime they generate this active money from their job or their business or whatever, they wanna take as much of this active money and put it here, that way they have more money working to earn them money passively. That way now you have 
time on your side because the thing that wealthy people have is time. You have the ability to live your life the way you want because your money is working hard to pay all of your bills and buy the things that you want. This is what differentiates a broke person from a wealthy person because a broke person lives here. They make money from their job or their business and this is what they use to spend and enjoy their life. And as soon as they stop working, they stop making money and now they don't have money to afford their lifestyle. What wealthy people do is they make money here and they take as much money here and put it here and then they live off of whatever money their money generates and so they can put as much money here into here and now they can enjoy the life because they are going to continue getting paid even if they stop working. This is what it means to be wealthy and escape the rat race because now you don't have to be physically working to pay your bills. Your money is working to pay your bills and to fund your lifestyle and now you can do what you want and you can do something that you enjoy. But the only way that you can make this happen is if you remember the first two things that I talk about. First, you gotta stop living like you're poor. You have to have the right mindset and you have to believe that this is possible for you because the first thing that everybody says is, oh, that's easy for you to say or oh, that's not possible for somebody like me. If you tell yourself it's not possible, yeah, you're right, it is going to be impossible for you. But if you believe that it's possible for you, you're going to figure out how you can do it and you're going to put the steps into action to actually make it happen. The second thing you got to do is you got to stop living the fake rich lifestyle because if you have no money to put here, you're not going to be able to create any income here. So the next thing you got to do after you have the right mindset is you got to stop blowing all of your money on things that you don't need. You might have to downsize for a little bit. You might have to say goodbye to your BMW for a little bit. You might have to put your vacations on pause for a little bit that we have more money here to put here. Because if all of your money that you're working to earn is going out to pay your bills and to fund this extravagant lifestyle, or even if it's not extravagant, to fund your lifestyle, then you're gonna have no money here. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta cut your expenses, that way you have more money to put here. The second thing that you wanna do is now that you understand how to use your money, is you wanna start attracting more money so you have more money to put here. Now the ways that you can earn more money is maybe by asking for a raise, working to earn a promotion, trying to start a side hustle, starting a side business. These things might take more work, but now as you're attracting more money, you can get the most benefit from your money because now you know how to put your money to work. You can put more money towards your investments and to things that are going to pay you for owning them. So now it's not just you working to fund your lifestyle and pay all your bills. Now it's your money working to pay your bills and you're working just to keep funding more investments. So now the question is, where do you actually put your money so your money is growing? Well, one place that you want to to put your money is into your own education because you got to understand how to actually use your money and this might mean reading books, buying courses, taking seminars, learning how to use your money the right way that way you can start generating more income. Second place might be in stocks or real estate. Both stocks and real estate, and when I talk about real estate I mean rental properties, both stocks and real estate you're buying for the sole purpose of making money. When you're spending money here to buy shoes, to buy clothes, to buy vacations, none of these things you're buying to make money because as soon as you buy a new pair of shoes or as soon as you go on a vacation, you don't expect to get any money back. You're buying these things to use and consume. Now that's not a problem if you can afford it, but if you can't afford it because you have no money coming in here, that's a problem. And so when we talk about buying things here, stocks, real estate, education, now the reason why you're buying these things is to make you more money. So it's a different mindset and you have to put more money here if you want to be able to live a bigger lifestyle because now you have more money working hard to earn you more money. We have tons of videos on our channel where I go over in more depth on how to actually invest your money and grow your money, which is why if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you do that. We're going to jump back into the show in just a minute, but before we do, here are a few words from our sponsor, M1. If you've been watching my videos, you've probably heard of me talk about passively investing your money in the stock market where you have a CPA, a consistent, passive, and automatic system where money is automatically invested into the stock market for you. Well, a super easy to use platform that can help you passively invest your money into the stock market is M1. And as a little disclaimer, at the time of me recording this, video, M1 is a tool that I use to passively invest my money into my portfolio of ETFs. The way it works is you get to create your pie or your portfolio of ETFs or stocks that you want to invest in, and then you can create a cadence of how often you want to invest into this portfolio of ETFs or stocks. For me, I invest every Wednesday. You can invest every two weeks, every month, but once you pick the cadence, you set it and forget it, and M1 is completely free for you to use. Now, of course, investing has risks. Are you guaranteed to make money when you invest? No, of course not. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point, which is why you want to always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But you can mitigate some of your risk by investing your money into good assets for the long term, which is why I invest my money into my portfolio of ETFs, whether the market's up 
and down because I'm investing for the long term. Now, of course, you want to do your own research, get a financial advisor if you need one, but M1 is a great tool that can allow you to passively invest your money yourself. Minority Mindset is a paid partner with M1, meaning if you use them, we will get compensated, but there's no additional cost to you. So if you want to learn more and create a free account with M1, I got the link to how you can do that down in the description below, or you can go to the minoritymindset.com slash M1. That's the minoritymindset.com slash the letter M and the number one. And with that, let's go back to the show. There are some little changes that you can make in your life today that can have a drastic impact on how much wealth you will achieve and when you will achieve this wealth in your lifetime. This is what I call the circle of wealth inspired by the Lion King circle of life. But in this, you get to choose if you want to be in the circle of wealth and you get to choose where you progress in the circle of wealth and where you choose to be is going to impact whether you're poor, broke, or extremely wealthy and when you achieve that level of wealth. So most of the time, we don't grow up with any sort of financial education. So we're nowhere on this chart. We're just out making money, spending money, and we're just living our lives. But when you decide, I want to be better with my money, I want to be financially educated, I want to become wealthy, then many times we go through a circle of wealth just like this where the first thing you realize is I need to start investing my money. How can I have money to invest? I spend less money. So we start here by being cheap. And what do you do? Well, you don't spend any money. You don't go out to eat, you live smaller, you cut out your expenses, and you don't spend any money. I was very cheap for very long because I did not know what to do or how to get to where I wanted to go. All I knew was if I didn't spend money, I'd have more money to go out and buy real estate as an investment. I'd have more money to invest in my business. That's all I knew. So I became very cheap. But that cheapness also came and bit me in the, you know, where, because I also turned down other opportunities that could have made me way more money. Because for example, when I started buying real estate, I was buying at the bottom of the 2008 real estate crash. And I'm in Michigan, and in Michigan at the time, real estate was selling for 90, sometimes even 93% off. Meaning, you could find a home for sale for under $10,000. And they were in pretty decent areas. Like the first investment property that I bought, I bought this 1,000 square foot condo for eight grand in a good area next to a mall, next to parks, next to shopping. I mean, it was in a good area. And I started buying up real estate like this. And I remember when home prices went to $30,000, I was like, this is so expensive. Who in the world wants to pay 30 grand for a home? Who in the world wants to pay 50 grand for a home? Are you crazy? A three bedroom, one and a half bath home for $35,000, are you out of your mind? And I turned down so many deals because I was cheap. Now those same homes that were selling for 35 grand to 50 grand are now worth two to three, maybe $400,000. Now I made good investments. I bought a number of properties. I made a lot of money during that time, but I was also really young. I had no idea what I was doing. I got very fortunate with the timing, but that cheapness bit me where I lost out out of good opportunities because all I was looking at was the numbers. I didn't really understand how I could make more money. I just saw the number today and I was like, I don't want to spend this much money, it's too much money, instead of thinking a little bit bigger. And so what do we do in this situation when we're cheap? All we look at is the price. We don't care about anything else. All we're looking at is the amount of money it's going to cost me and that's it. You're not looking at anything else. You don't care about what value you get. You don't care about what experience you get. You don't care about what money you can make. All you care about is how much it's going to cost me and how much somebody else is going to make and that's it. All you're looking at is what you're going to get out of me and not what I'm going to get and that is one of the biggest things that hold people back from becoming extremely wealthy because you're so worried about what other people are getting in a transaction instead of looking at what you can get. And until you can progress here, you're gonna be stuck in that level, no matter how much money you're making. I know people, doctors, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that are stuck in this cheap mindset. And when you're stuck in this cheap mindset, you will never be able to progress. Sure, you make good money, you have a good salary, but you'll never be able to become truly wealthy until you can progress away from this cheap mindset. And I gotta say, you know, my family's from a state in India called Punjab, Indian people are notorious for being cheap. And it is very hard to break out of this because you have this generational mindset of being cheap where I'm not going to pay money for anything. I'm going to try to get everything for myself, nothing for anybody else. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It's very hard 
to progress and become extremely successful. I'm not talking about a few hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm not talking about just being able to have a couple of vacations. I'm talking about becoming actually wealthy. If you want to become actually wealthy, it is impossible to do that while being cheap. You got to be smart, but being cheap is a mindset game that's going to stop you from getting there. Then you progress onto the frugal lifestyle. This is where now you're cheap on some things, but you splurge on a few other things. So I became more frugal when I started to understand more about the concept of investing and I started to realize, oh, I can spend more money on some things like my education, my investments, but I shouldn't spend money on other things. So in this stage, I was making, I don't know, maybe a hundred, hundred some thousand dollars a year. I was still really young trying to understand the system. I was stuck here for a very long time like years, I was stuck in this mindset. This was one of the hardest ones for me to break out of because I got stuck in this idea of, I don't want to spend any money on anything unless it provides me with value. And I was so stuck in this mindset that I remember I was uh, wearing shoes. I was wearing these Nikes. I don't know how old they were and they were duct taped like, or masking tape. I would tape them because the whole flap, the bottom of the shoe, I gotta bring this on video because I still have the shoes as like a memento in my office at home. And the flap would just flap like this, so I taped it shut. And I would walk to class in these shoes, even though I had rental properties, even though I was making good money. I'm walking around with these shoes because I'm trying to be extremely frugal. And I cut back so significantly on everything, that way I could continue to invest in my business. Now, this is way better than here. This is a very profitable stage where you can be investing in the things that you're doing in your life. You can continue to understand what's important. I'm investing in classes. I remember I paid $3,500 for a class on wholesaling real estate, which was a ton of money for me at the time because I had all my money constantly being invested into my business and into real estate. And I didn't have a huge chunk of cash sitting there in my bank account. And to make the $3,500 investment here in this stage would have been impossible. I would have never paid $3,000 or $3,500 for some sort of education program because the only thing that I would have said is, you're getting rich because of me. What am I going to get out of this? Some education program? I wasn't looking at it that, oh, I pay you three grand or $3,500 and I can make thirty grand or whatever. Well, in this stage, I finally understood that if I pay you $3,500, I can make more. And I did make many times more than what I spent but it's a different mindset shift. But I then never spent on myself and I continued to kind of have this cheap back thing in my mind where I knew I didn't want to spend money on a lot of things and I only spent money on some things. But then this is more of a recent transition where then I started to become more of a value spender. And this is where now you can really start to enjoy the fruits of the things that you're doing and you can really start to become wealthy. And this, I mean, you can really start to become wealthy here. I mean, it's gonna be impossible here. But once you become here, now you can start investing in your wealth. But this is where you can really start enjoying your wealth in a smart way. Because now once you hit this value stage, this is where now not only are you spending money on yourself, your business, the way you make money, your education, you're spending money on the things that will help you increase your income, that will help you increase your wealth. You've already done that, but now, you can make smarter decisions with the money that you do have on yourself as well. And what happens now is you'll find that the things that you spend on your value, I know this is not making any sense, but you'll understand in a second. When you spend money on this value, you're going to end up making a whole lot more money anyways on the other side too. Like I've spent money on conversations, I've spent money on random things which get me connected to people. For example, who in the world would spend $700 on a pen? Right? I mean, it, it's a Mont Blanc. You don't need a, a $15 pen. You can have a 10 cent pen, let alone a $700 pen. And what I've realized is there's a market for $700 pens. Now, I haven't gone out and bought a $700 pen for myself. I have bought it for other people. But what I've learned is from the pens that I have gotten, because people have gifted me these $500, $1,000 pens, is there's a market for these pens. And people who have these pens are like a little community. So what happens? When you go see somebody else, you go to a meeting and I have this $500, $700 pen, people ask you, oh, what kind of pen is that? Is that a Mont Blanc? People who understand what it is, know what it is, and the people who do understand what it is have money too. 
Now all of a sudden, you just made a connection with somebody who has money who would have been very hard to make that connection with in the first place. And now you start to build more of these business connections because now you're investing in value. Now, this doesn't mean you have to go and blow money. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. Like, I don't spend money on designer clothes. It's not interesting to me. I don't like the idea of that. I haven't spent money on a fancy car. I'm still driving a beat up car today because I'm investing heavily into my business. I'm investing heavily into my investments. Every one of my employees has a better car than I do. I'm investing more into my business than I am into my cars, but I'm looking at value. Anytime I spend money now, I'm looking not at the price, I'm looking at value. When I go to a restaurant, I want value. When I go and buy a nice car, I'm gonna look at the value, not the price. When I go on a vacation, I look at value. Like when I go on a vacation now, I look at not just where I'm staying, but what type of beds the hotel has, which is such a drastic mindset shift from when I was here. Because I remember back in these days, when I used to go work in the wedding business, I used to work in the wedding business for a number of years. We used to go and we were here. What do we do? Well, we had, it was a few of us guys, we used to go and find the cheapest hotel room because the wedding party who was paying for us to travel to this hotel, they might give us an allowance of $200 a night for a hotel. And so in our minds, if you're paying us $200 a night for a hotel and we find a hotel for $39 a night and we all share one hotel room, well then we can pocket the difference. So what do we do? Well, all four of us, or more sometimes, would cram ourselves into one hotel room, sleep on the ground, sleep on the bed, sleep together, sleep uncomfortably, sleep in the chair, wake up with back pain, wake up without being able to sleep, and then go out and work. That's my cheap mindset. Now in the value mindset, completely different game. But now we're calling the hotels to see what kind of beds they have, that way you can get a good night of sleep. I had no idea. I mean, this is kind of funny. I don't know why I'm going off on this tangent on hotel beds. But I remember I went to uh, Embassy Suites. This is kind of where it all started a number of years ago. And I slept in this Embassy Suites bed. And I was like, this is strange. Like, this was comfortable. Like, uh, I was with my, my wife now and I was like, did you sleep good? Like, I fell asleep so fast and it was just a weird experience. And she was like, yeah, it was the same thing. And we stayed at another embassy suites and it happened again. I was like, I've never slept this good in a hotel bed in my life. Then I started learning. Oh, Marriott's and Hilton's have a different type of hotel beds. And these type of companies have different types of hotel beds. And you learn that, oh, the higher end hotels have better hotel beds. You can sleep better. So now from a business perspective, when I go in and stay in a hotel, I want a better hotel bed. That way I can be well rested. If I'm well rested, I can work better. I can perform better. My health is better. I take better care of myself. It's a completely different mindset shift. Now, of course, I want to make sure I can afford whatever I spend. I'm not saying go and spend money on things that I can't afford but it's a different approach. But I'm not looking at the price. I'm looking at the value that I get. When I go out to a restaurant, there's a completely different level of service when I pay $200 for a dinner versus $25 for dinner. You get a different level of service, different level of experience, different value. Can you afford it? If yes, then there's a time and a place for that value. So now you completely shift the discussion of price versus value. And now I spend a lot of money on things that will provide me more value not just in my business, but in life. And this is where now you start to live a little bit differently. You start to enjoy money a little bit differently. And what's interesting is many times this ends up bringing more money to you as well. And then in this circle of wealth, sometimes you see people go from this value stage to the baller stage, where in the baller stage, you're just spending money to spend money. And this is where things get kind of reckless and they get kind of dangerous because now people are spending money not because it's providing them value, not because it's giving them some sort of extra thing, not because it's getting them business connections, but because they can. And now you're spending money not just because you can, but because, well, you want to. And now you're spending money on things that not just that you can afford, but that you have to kind of stretch yourself to buy. This is where now people get in a lot of trouble because now you become a baller. Maybe you've made good money at this point. Maybe you understood how to get away from cheap to frugal. Now you invest it in yourself. You learn how to make more money. You learn how to invest your money. You learn how to grow your money. You're making better money. Then you learn how to enjoy the value. You learn how to be smarter with your money. But then you kept going on and on and on to the point where now you're just a baller. I you going out and spending money, blowing money on things that, you know, don't really do anything. You're making everybody else have a lot of fun with you. You're making yourself look rich. You have all the nice things. And this is what then triggers ballers to enter this again, because eventually you run out of money. And unless you can continue supporting your lifestyle, you can continue supporting your expensive habits, you're going to end up here again. Now, this is where you got to be smart and understand this is where the wealth is built. The wealth is built 
here. Wealth starts to become built here when you become frugal, meaning now you start spending money on value and you're not spending money on anything else. But then you start to earn more money, you start to become more wealthy, and then you realize that you can spend more money on value in general. Now you're going to look at other things that aren't a direct benefit, that aren't just your accountant, that aren't just your education, that aren't just your coaching, that aren't just your consulting, that aren't just the things that will make you more successful, more financially happier, but also on the side of the way you live your life, which will give you better connections and help you succeed and perform better in your day to day, right? Your fitness, your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health, you're investing in yourself and your lifestyle. But then there's a difference between this living and the baller living where now you're just spending money, having a good time and making everybody see how rich you are. This is what puts people back here. This is where you want to be. And you don't have to go through this full circle. But you see a lot of people that go through this full circle or they go through it with their families. You know, they talk about the whole three generation theory where you work hard to become successful. Your kids might see how hard you've worked and they try to take it one step further. Their kids didn't see what you had to go through. They didn't see the struggles that you had to go through to go through this and this and to become successful. So now what do they do? They're born into wealth and no one taught them about the value of hard work. No one taught them the value of a dollar. So they start here and then their kids start right back here because now they have no money left for them. So this is where you want to be smart and understand and this is where the wealth is built and you want to be focusing here. Now, how do you do that, right? Well, the first thing is obviously being smart with your money, understanding what's happening in the markets so that we can make better decisions with your money. If you want to know more about how to do that, you can join Market Briefs, completely free newsletter that I created to help investors and people stay up to date on what's happening in the financial markets. That way you can make better decisions. That way you can be more aware. That way you can understand how to use your money the right way. If you want to join Market Briefs, it's completely free. And you can join Market Briefs by clicking the link down in the description below. So now when it comes to actually implementing it, this is where it really goes back to your mindset and understanding the difference between a growth mindset and well everything else because most of us have this broke mindset that we grew up with this idea where there's a limited supply of money there's a limited amount of success in the world and if somebody else has money or somebody else has success or if somebody else achieves something i can't but there's so much money out there there's so much success out there that if somebody else is successful happy has money that doesn't stop me from achieving it too and I can have a lot of money and they can have a lot of money and when you understand that now you start to look at the world very differently and now you can understand oh I can think a lot bigger and I can do a lot bigger but it requires you to build that growth mindset and not be stuck where you are today because many times we assume that I make 50 grand a year and if I want to put more money aside I need to start from going and saving ten thousand dollars and investing this ten thousand dollars a year and start doing $15,000 a year or $16,000 a year. Now, what are you doing? You're squeezing pennies out of this limited pie. All you see is the 50 grand that you make today, but you're not seeing that. What if I took my pie from 50 grand to $500,000 a year? Because now if you take a pie from 50 grand to $500,000, well, now you can put aside a whole lot more than 16 grand. I mean, you could put aside $100,000 and still live a much better and a much bigger lifestyle. And this is that mindset shift that you have to start making and understand that it is possible. Is it easy? No, but it can work if you think that you can. And then you work towards that. It's not going to happen next month or maybe not even next year or maybe in a few years. But if you start working towards Towards that and you start thinking towards that you're going to start putting action in place to help take you from where you are today to a much bigger lifestyle to a much bigger income but you have to start thinking that it's possible that we start doing something about it because if we just sit there day to day keep doing the same thing thinking man if only one day i can make half a million dollars a year but you're not doing anything towards it well you're not going to get anywhere and so it requires a change in your action a change in your lifestyle and change in the way that you live that way you can actually achieve this bigger growth lifestyle but you have to change your mindset first that's why i always say your success starts with your mindset you have to be wealthy here before you can be wealthy in your bank account the divide between the rich and the poor keeps getting wider and wider and this is where the majority of people complain about the system but what i want you to do as a minority mindset thinker is to understand what it is that the rich are doing that way you can start doing it too and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video most people assume that if you want to become rich what you have to do is either you're going to have to become a doctor or a high paid professional or you have to have this money just fall into your lap somehow the reality especially in our economy now is we have so many high paid professionals 
doctors, engineers, attorneys, executives who make a big salary but are struggling financially. As soon as you make money, you have to pay half of this in taxes and now you have to live off of what's left and people expect that if you're a doctor or if you're a high paid professional that you have to look like a doctor or a high paid professional. You gotta have that nice house, you gotta have the nice car, you gotta have those nice vacations and that's why so many people who are high paid professionals never have the opportunity to build wealth. The real reason why people become wealthy or don't become wealthy is not what degree you have, it's not who your parents are, it's not what job you're working, it's what you do with the money that you earn. I mean, we've made multiple videos on our channel where I talked about people who earn minimum wage. Maybe they were janitors or they worked at a parking lot and they retired with millions of dollars while you have high paid professionals that don't have a penny to their name. The one thing that differentiates somebody who becomes wealthy and can live the life of their dreams and somebody who cannot is your mindset. Because if you have the right mindset, if you have the right financial education, then you will have the ability to go out and take risks. You will have the ability to know what kind of risk to take and you will have the ability to go out and do something with your money that way you can go out and actually become wealthy. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna be going over five lessons to understand what it takes to become wealthy. That way you can understand the difference between the rich and the poor mindset. But before we get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below and if you haven't already, be sure to join our free Discord community called the Guac Talk Community. And we call it the Guac Talk Community because as we all know, extra guac is truly a symbol of extra wealth. And in this community, you can chat about all things minority mindset, from the stock market, to the real estate market, to the cryptocurrency market, to all things building wealth. This community is completely free. And if you wanna join our free Discord server, I'll put the link to where you can do that in the description below. The first thing that all wealthy people understand is the difference between an asset and a liability. Now, this might seem intuitive, but the reality is many times we don't understand what is an asset and a liability because the majority of people are buying liabilities thinking that they are assets. The way that I look at assets and liabilities is that an asset is something that puts money into your pocket and a liability is something that takes money away from your pocket. The three biggest liabilities that the majority of people have that most people don't even realize that are liabilities are one, your house, two, your car, and three, your cash. So let's talk about these three things. Let's start by talking about your house. Everybody says that your home, the home that you live in, is your biggest investment. I mean, everybody says this. I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate investor, and I'm an attorney. So I've heard this from so many different angles. Every real estate agent is gonna tell you that your home is an investment. Every banker is gonna tell you that your home is an investment. The government is gonna tell you that your home is an investment. So what do people do? Well, when people think that their home is an investment, they're gonna go out and they're gonna say, okay, I can comfortably afford a $300,000 home, but if my home is an investment, how about I go out and buy something a little bit bigger? a little bit nicer. So now you go out and you stretch yourself a little bit thinner and now you go out and you buy a $400,000 home. And then as soon as you move in, you're gonna wanna renovate the kitchen and then you're gonna wanna renovate your master bedroom and then you're gonna wanna repaint the home and then your furnace might break, you're gonna have to pay for that. And then a few years later, your roof is gonna start leaking, and then you're gonna have to pay for a brand new roof. And so most people's homes end up becoming a money pit because now every single month, you're paying for upgrades, you're paying for repairs, you're paying for maintenance, and this is something you have to do with your home. What I tell people is if you're serious about becoming wealthy, before you go out and buy a home to live in, go out and buy a rental property because when you buy a rental property, you're gonna buy it for one sole purpose, to make money. The home that you're living in, you're not buying it to make money, you're buying it to make memories. And so now when you buy this property to make money, it's gonna be paying you with cash flow every single month, and you can use this cash flow to now pay for the home that you live in. The first property that I ever bought was a small 1,000 square foot condo, and I didn't buy it for myself to live in. I bought it to rent out to somebody else, and after all expenses, after I figured out how to do the whole real estate investing thing, this condo was paying me somewhere between $250 and $350 a month in profit, each and every month, and this is cash flow that I was getting without having to do anything. So I want to own rental properties if I want an asset rather than just a home, which is a liability. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with owning a home, and it's better to own a home than to own nothing, but 
There's so much more that you can do than just thinking that you need to take all of your cash and use it to buy a home because your home is what is gonna make you wealthy. Your home is gonna give you generational wealth because you own your property. This is one of the biggest lies sold to the masses because it's an easy way to sell you, to go to your bank, to pull out money, to go buy this property that you're gonna live in, and now this home becomes a money pit for so many people. The reason why I look at your home that you live in as a liability rather than an asset is because because now anytime you put a dollar into renovating your property, you have to do that with after tax dollars. So you make money, you pay taxes, and then you have a little bit of money left. Now you take this little bit of money left and you're gonna put that into a new kitchen versus with a rental property, I make money, I spend money on renovating kitchens, and then if there's any money left, that's what I pay taxes on. So you're taxed very differently. Second, the cost for you to live in your home will always keep going up even if you don't have a mortgage because every single year, you're gonna have to pay more money to maintain your home and your property taxes are always going to keep going up. And if you don't factor that cost into your income, well, then you could run into a problem where one day you have a fixed income, but now your property taxes go up and now you can't afford your property even if you don't have a mortgage because your property taxes are so much more than what they were when you first bought your home. And third, one of the most expensive costs are missed opportunities. Because now if you take all the extra cash that you have and you use it as a down payment for your house and you take all the extra money that you have after the end of every month and you use that to renovate your kitchen, and you use that to renovate your bathroom, and you use that to renovate your bedroom, well now you don't have the cash to go out and invest in opportunities that might come your way, and that can be one of the most expensive costs that are because now you're missing out on all the other opportunities. That's why I want you to invest first and buy the liability second. The second liability that keeps so many people broke is your car. Now most people understand that your car isn't gonna make you money, but what most people don't understand is how much your car is actually costing you because the way most people look at their car is okay I'm gonna go out and buy myself this nice 30 35 thousand dollar car and it's something that I need because I need a car to get to and from work and it might cost me five hundred dollars a month and then you add in your insurance and your gas and your maintenance maybe it's gonna cost you six hundred dollars a month and this is something that you hold on to for five years because you're financing your car over 60 months but what ends up happening for so many people is five years go by you no longer have a monthly payment and then instead of keeping your car you say this is kind of weird I don't have any monthly payments. So then you go out, you trade in your car, and you go out and buy a new car, and you start the payments game all over again. And so now, for the rest of your life, you have this car payment because this is just what's normal. Everybody has a car payment, and every few years, you flip into a new car, and the payments start all over again. The real cost of your car is not just that $500 that you're paying to your car company and your bank every single month. It's the missed opportunity that you could be doing with that $500. Because now, if you took that $500 a month, and instead of giving it to your car, company and you paid yourself. So you use this $500 and you use this money to invest. I don't care where you invest it, whether it's stocks or real estate, whatever. And you can just get an average 8% return and you do this for 50 years. Now after 50 years, your $500 monthly investment that you were given to your car company is going to be worth more than three and a half million dollars in your bank account. That's three and a half million dollars of missed opportunity that so many Americans are just throwing away because they're letting their car drive them instead of them being able to drive a car that they can actually actually afford. So what I want you to do is instead of you going out and financing a car that you can't afford, go out and buy a car with cash and take that extra cash that you're no longer giving to your car company and you're no longer giving to your bank and take that cash and pay yourself by investing this money into yourself. Now you don't have to wait 50 years to start enjoying your money. It's just you using this money to pay for yourself that we're not buying a whole bunch of liabilities that you cannot afford. I want you to build your wealth. Build these assets first real estate, stocks, build the things that are gonna pay you before you start paying everybody else. And the third biggest liability that so many people don't understand that is a liability is your cash. I grew up in a traditional Indian household. My parents are immigrants from a state in India called Punjab, and the traditional Indian mentality is a saving mentality. It's a save first mentality. And so I grew up being told that if I wanna become wealthy, I need to get a high salary, I need to become a doctor, and then I need to save as much money as possible. But the reality, especially in our environment that we're facing right now, is that saving is losing. We are in an environment where money is printed like crazy. So the value of our dollars keeps getting diluted and the value and buying power of our dollars keeps going down. So now, if you wanna go out and buy something, it's gonna cost you way more today than it did 10 years ago. It's gonna cost you more today than it did 20 years ago. And this trend is not slowing down. So these dollars that you keep in your bank account, which are not growing, 
Because if you go to your banker and you ask them what interest rate they're paying you on your savings, it's gonna be next to nothing. So your cash is sitting there flat. It's sitting there dead while the price of everything else keeps going up. So the value of your dollars is dropping very quickly. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this cash that you have and you wanna put it here. You wanna spend as much cash as possible. And when the majority of people hear that, what they think is, okay, well, let me go to Louis Vuitton, let me go spend my cash. But let's talk about that for a second because one of the richest people in the world happens to be the owner of Louis Vuitton. And the reason why he became wealthy and the reason why he became one of the richest people in the world isn't because he was going out and spending all of his cash buying name brand things. It was because a whole bunch of people want to look rich and the way they're able to do that is by giving Louis Vuitton all their money. See, Louis Vuitton for him is an asset because people buy Louis Vuitton from him. But for the majority of people, Louis Vuitton is a liability to take one liability and they convert it for another losing liability. See, what wealthy people understand is that your cash, your savings are never gonna make you wealthy. Instead, you need to understand what to do with your cash. First, you need to have some cash for an emergency. You wanna have somewhere between three to 12 months worth of expenses sitting there, that way if something bad happens, if you lose your job or something happens to your car, you have some cash to fall back on. This is your emergency money. Second, you want to save cash for a big purchase. You want to buy a home, you want to buy a car. This is why you should have some cash to buy these things. And third, the last reason why you should be saving cash is to buy an investment. If it doesn't fall into one of these three things, you should not be saving cash. After you hit that emergency fund, after you have cash for whatever big purchases, the rest of your cash needs to be going towards your investments. Now that doesn't mean that your money has to be invested tomorrow. That just means this money is intended to be invested. So when an investment deal comes your way, you have the cash to invest. And so now what you're doing is you're taking this liability and you're turning it into an asset. What most people do is they take this liability cash and they turn it into a bigger liability, Louis Vuitton. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with having liabilities. There's nothing wrong with having a nice home. Nothing wrong with having a nice car. There's nothing wrong with having Louis Vuitton as long as you can afford it. That's what I want you to understand. Wealthy people build this before they build this. They want to let their assets pay for their liabilities. The majority of the world build this so they look right there rich and they have nothing here. I want you to understand how money works. That means build this and let these pay for these. The second lesson that every wealthy person understands are the different phases of building wealth. When somebody has the realization that, okay, I need to be better with my money, I wanna become wealthy, I wanna have this financial freedom, the first thing that everybody goes through is you go through the saving phase because you realize that, hey, I need to have some extra cash. And one of the most successful ways to have some extra cash is to stop giving all your cash away. So now what you do is you enter the saving phase. You wanna know how do you save the most money possible? You become a penny pincher. You stop going out to Starbucks. You stop buying nice things. You stop going on vacations. And this is where the majority of people get stuck. They assume that you have to keep doing this forever if you wanna become wealthy. They become penny pinchers and couponers for the rest of their life, and they never wanna spend a penny because they wanna become wealthy. But the reality is you will never become wealthy just by saving your money, because there's a limit to how much money that you can save. If you make $50,000 a year and you are saving 50% of your income, well, now you're saving and putting inside $20,000 and you're spending $20,000. If you wanna be even more aggressive, maybe you can save and put aside 25,000 and you're living off of 15,000. Maybe you can live off of just 10,000 and you can save 30,000. But there's a limit to how much you can save, but there's no limit to how much you can grow. And this is where now you gotta go to the next phase. You have to know how to live below your means. If you do not know how to live below your means, if you do not know how to save your money the right way, if you do not know how to spend your money here, you will never be able to become wealthy. Because if you're able to grow your income to a million dollars a year and you don't know how to manage this money, well, you're not gonna stay wealthy for very long. So you gotta understand how to live below your means. This is the first stage of becoming wealthy. The second thing, and very few people come to here, is you need to know how to grow your money. How do you now grow the pie? Here you're thinking, okay, I'm making $50,000 a year. How much can I put aside to start building my wealth? 
Here you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I go from 50,000 to half a million? Or how do I go from 50,000 to 5 million? You're trying to grow now. So you're looking for ways to invest your money. You're looking for ways for you to increase your income. You're looking for ways to grow the money that you have. That way you have more money. That way you have the cash to invest into things that are gonna pay you with passive cash flow. That way you can have the sort of financial freedom. Once you get here, we're gonna still be making a lot of financial sacrifices because what you're gonna realize is, hey, this making money thing is kind of fun. You're seeing how you can grow your money and you're gonna wanna grow your money as fast as possible. So you're gonna be taking every extra penny that you have and you're gonna wanna put it here. But eventually, you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna say, all right, I need to know how to spend my money. How do I get my time back? How do I spend my money in a way that's gonna benefit me in the most possible ways? How do I get to live my life the way I want while continuing to generate this passive income? This is where now you have to know how to spend. Very few people actually make it to this stage. Most people get stuck here. They just start becoming a couponer, they start saving pennies, but then they never realize that a penny saved is just a penny, and then they never make it here. Then some people start growing their money and they realize, hey, this is cool, I'm starting to grow my wealth, but this is where you hear of people who die with millions of dollars but never had the opportunity to actually enjoy their money because they didn't know how to spend their money. So you want to understand this and then move here and then move here. Once you start to develop that wealth, you need to know how to spend your money in a way that's gonna benefit you in the most ways possible. How do you buy your time back? How do you buy the most value in your life? And how do you start enjoying your life and enjoying the money and the wealth that you work so hard to build? Now you can start buying the liabilities. Now you can start buying the nice cars. Now you can start buying the nice clothes without worrying about it, but you need to know how to spend your money the right way because you don't wanna just blow all your money because now you're gonna end up broke again. And you don't wanna spend no money because why did you work so hard to earn this money? So you need to know how to spend, you need to know how to give, and you need to know how to manage your wealth once you get to here. The third lesson that wealth people understand that the majority of people don't is that wealthy people have a growth mindset while the majority of people have a limited scarcity mindset. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier. See, what most people do is they make this much money and this is their expenses and they say, okay, I want to become wealthy so I need some extra cash. So how can I squeeze my expenses down to here so now I have only this many expenses and I can take this extra cash and invest it. But what I want you to understand is, yeah, you gotta know how to do that. But the second thing you gotta do is you need to know, how do I take this income and grow it to here? Now, you can have even more expenses, but you have so much more money that you can put towards your investments because now you're working on growing the pie instead of just trying to figure out how to squeeze another penny out of the pie. One of the things that I like to say is that a penny saved is just a penny. So you gotta understand that pinching pennies has its purpose. You gotta know how to live below your means, but you gotta think bigger than that. You need to have this growth mindset. You need to know how to grow the pie. And the reason why this is hard for so many people is because it requires you to think different and it requires you to spend money. Like one of the things that we do at our business here at Minority Mindset is we're always trying to think about how can we increase our expenses. The reason being is our goal is to increase our expenses so we can increase our income. When I talk to my friends who are newer real estate investors about real estate, one of the biggest issues that all of them have is why should I be paying a property management company $100 a month to manage this property when there's really not that much work? The tenant pays rent every single month and yeah, you gotta pay a property tax bill and you you gotta make sure that the tenant pays, but what's the big deal? Why can't I just keep this money in my pocket? And then when we're hanging out on Saturday evening, they get a call from their tenant saying, hey, something's wrong with the toilet, or hey, the shower is leaking, and now my friend has to go out and they have to call their contractor, their contractor has to go to the property, their contractor's gonna say, hey, it's gonna cost me $350 to pay for this. Now you're gonna say, oh, can you do it for 300? Now you gotta deal with the contractor, the contractor's gonna have to work with you as the owner to make sure that the job gets done, the tenant's gonna be calling you, yelling, at you because they're not happy about the time that the contractor went out there, your tenant forgot to pay the water bill, so now you are the one that's getting the letter from the city and you have to pay the city this back water bill if the tenant doesn't pay, and if the tenant doesn't pay his rent, now you're the one that has to deal with the eviction process. Or you can hire a property management company, pay them a little bit of money every single month because they'll just take a percentage of whatever rental income that you're getting, and you can do none of that. And you can let the property management company deal with the headache, make sure you're getting paid because they're experts at that. If you are a new real estate investor, you don't know the ins and outs of dealing with tenants. You don't know the ins and outs of dealing with contractors. You don't know the ins and outs of dealing with cities. And if this is what they do full time every single day, all day, 
you might as well pay them a little bit, that way you get their expertise, and now you got your time back, and now you can use your time to invest in more properties and to grow your portfolio. Yeah, you gotta increase your expenses every time you buy more properties, because now you have to pay them to manage more properties, but your goal is this. You're trying to grow the pie rather than just trying to squeeze a few pennies out of the pie. I don't manage any of my rental properties. I have a property management company that does that. They know what I want, they work with my goals, and they make that happen, and my goal is to do this. I'm trying to grow the pie instead of just trying to squeeze a few more pennies outside of it. The next thing that happens is people say, oh, well, that's easy for you to invest in real estate because you have the money to do that and you have the experience. I can't do that because I can't find a real estate property for less than $2 million. And so what are you doing? You're creating limitations for yourself. You're telling yourself that you can't do it. As soon as you tell yourself that you can't do something, I guarantee you will not be able to do it because your mind has already turned off. It stopped looking for ways to do it. So what you gotta do now is you gotta start looking for opportunities because I guarantee if you spent as much time looking for opportunities as you were being a cynic, as you were hating, as you were complaining, chances are you're gonna find a whole lot more opportunities come your way. So what you can do now is start looking for opportunities maybe outside of your city. Look in the outskirts, look in a different state. There's a lot of real estate opportunities outside of just one locality. So you gotta start looking in different places and you'll be able to start finding other real estate opportunities. The next thing people say is, I don't have the money to invest in real estate. How in the world can I start investing in real estate? Again, now it goes back to, can you find this growth mindset? Can you find opportunities? The majority of people are gonna sit there and complain, but you want to be the person that's finding the opportunities. When I realized that I wanted to be a real estate investor, I jumped in with both feet. I started going to real estate seminars. I joined the local real estate investor meetup in my area, and so I would start to go to these monthly or bi-monthly events. I became a real estate salesperson, and because I became a real estate salesperson, I got to meet a whole bunch of other real estate agents, and my real estate broker happened to be somebody that taught real estate investing. And so I got to know her, and so I started to get it out there, and I started to meet as many people as possible and when I realized that I didn't have enough cash to want to buy properties because buying real estate is expensive that's when I started looking for new ways to start generating cash and at one of the real estate seminars that I attended there was a couple people talking about this way that you can buy real estate with no money down but you're not actually buying real estate you would enter into the contract to buy a property and then you would flip the contract to somebody else so you have no risk and you could walk away with a decent chunk of change in your pocket so if there was a home on sale for hundred thousand dollars you would enter into contract to buy it for $90,000 and then he would turn around and he would sell this contract to buy the home to somebody else for $97,500. So you enter into a contract to buy it for 90, you sell it for $97,500 and now you sell the home, you keep the $7,500 difference, somebody buys a home for below market value and the person that has a $100,000 home is happy because now they can finally sell the property. They've probably had the home listed for a long time and they haven't been able to sell and they need to sell and now they finally have somebody to sell so everybody walks away happy and you get to walk away with a big check. When I started learning about the system, I got really intrigued. The problem was if I wanted to learn how to do this in more depth, I had to pay the teachers $3,500. And that was a lot of money for me back then, but I wanted to invest in myself. Remember, I wanted to increase my expenses, that way I could increase my income. So I invested in myself, I learned how to do it, and then I started doing this exact same thing. It's called wholesaling real estate. It took me months to get my first sale, but I made my money back many times over, and this was now cash that I could start using to buy more real estate. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, maybe it's to hire somebody who can help you grow, or maybe it's to go to a seminar, or maybe it's to buy a class or maybe it's to buy a book. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, nobody else is going to be willing to invest in you and then you're going to be limited right here. You have to develop this growth mindset and you have to be willing to learn from people who are already doing it. And a lot of times it's going to come at a price. So you have to be willing to invest in yourself, invest in your own education. That way you can grow the pie into something bigger. See, the majority of people hate the idea of somebody else making a profit off of them. So they make it their mission to make sure that nobody profits off of them. I love it when people profit off of me because if someone's profiting off of me, that means I'm getting some value. I like buying things that give me value. And I have no problem if somebody's profiting off of me as long as I'm getting some value in return. And so what I'm looking for is not what the cost is, I'm looking for the value that I'm getting in return. And this is the difference between somebody who becomes wealthy and somebody who stays broke because if you're always worried about somebody making a dollar off of you, you will never have the opportunity to go out and make 
$2 because people are so worried about losing $1 that they miss out on the opportunity of making two. So what you need to do is you need to start developing this growth mindset and instead of just looking at the price that you have to pay, start looking at the value that you're getting because what you want to start doing is you want to think about how you can grow your pie instead of just trying to squeeze a few more pennies out of your pie. The fourth lesson that wealthy people understand that the majority of people don't is the correlation between money and happiness. See, the majority of people put up the smoke screen because they don't have money, they don't understand money, so they say things like money doesn't matter, money can't buy happiness, you shouldn't worry about money. These are the things that I grew up hearing. But at the same time, I would see my parents go to work every single day. They would go early in the morning, they would come back late at night. I barely saw my parents when I was growing up because they were always working to make money. And this is where things didn't make sense to me. If money doesn't matter, if I shouldn't talk about money, if I'm not allowed to talk about money, why in the world are you going to work every single day just to get a paycheck? See, the first thing that you have to understand is that money itself is just a tool. It's a tool that you use to pay your bills, it's a tool that you use to fund your vacation, it's a tool that you use to live the life that you want. Money itself is not gonna make you happy. But money is something that is important for you to be able to live your life. Because most people are scared to say that money is important. But the reality is if money wasn't important, you wouldn't have so many people miserable at jobs they hate, going home telling their kids that hey, you shouldn't worry about money, just go to school, go get a degree, and go be miserable earning a paycheck, doing something that you hate, because money doesn't matter. But the reality is, money matters. For so many people, if you didn't have to stress about your bills, if you didn't have to worry about how you were gonna fund your kid's education, if you didn't have to worry about how you're gonna pay for your next vacation, if you didn't have to worry about how you're gonna buy that gift that you want for your spouse, your life financially would be a whole lot easier. Now the thing that you have to understand about money is that money is just one aspect of life. We talk about money quite a bit on our YouTube channel because, well, we teach financial education. So we focus on the money aspect. But there's a whole lot more to life than money. And you have to remember that. And you need to know how money plays a part in your life. Because a lot of people get this confused. They assume that, hey, I'm miserable. I have no friends. I hate my life. But if I have a million dollars, I'll be happy and I'll be able to live my dream life. And then if you ever achieve that million, you're gonna realize that now you're more miserable than you were before because now you thought that you did what you needed to to become happy and now you don't have that happiness and now you're gonna be even more miserable. So what you need to do is you need to know how money plays a part in your life, that way you can enjoy the wealth that you have and that way you can use your money to amplify your happiness. There's four aspects to life. I call this my quadrifid theory that you have to know how each aspect of your life fits on top of one another. At the bottom of this quadrifid triangle is what I call physical fitness. You have to be physically healthy. If you are on your deathbed, you don't care if you have $10 million in the bank, the only thing you wanna do is be healthy. The only thing you wanna do is be able to breathe. The only thing you wanna do is to be able to go outside and walk again. So if you are not physically healthy, that's the first thing that you have to take care of. Because if you don't have the ability to breathe, if you don't have the ability to live your life, well, that's gonna hold you back from doing anything. So you need to make sure that you're physically healthy. Then you need to make sure that you are mentally happy. So this goes to who do you have around you? What are you doing? Are you happy right now? Because if you're depressed when you're worth $10,000, suddenly having a million dollars is not gonna make you not depressed. You gotta take care of your mental health and you gotta invest in that. If it's gonna take you $20,000 to go into rehab to get your mental life in order, go and do it. Because that's the cost that you will never be able to fix just by having more money. You need to take care of your mental health and if this is not something that you're taking care of right now, it's not suddenly gonna be fixed when you have more money. So you gotta understand, you gotta be physically fit, you gotta be mentally fit, and then you need to be spiritually fit. Spiritual fitness doesn't mean religion. This means what is your purpose? What is your reason for waking up in the morning every single day and wanting to conquer the day? If you don't love what you do, if you don't have a reason to get up every single morning, it doesn't matter if you got $10 million in the bank. You have no reason to get out of bed. You need to have a purpose. What is your reason for getting up every single morning? This is the reason why you're living life. You need to know this. And then once you have these three things, this is where financial fitness comes into play. Now, once you have this, more money can just amplify your happiness. You need to understand that money is just a tool. Money is just here 
But if you don't have money, it can ruin everything else. If you don't have money, well now, it can be a lot harder for you to be spiritually fit because you can't do what you love because you gotta go keep going to work every single day, making money, doing something that you hate. If you don't have money, it can ruin your mental fitness because now you're stressed about your bills. You're stressed that you cannot give your wife or your husband what they want. You're stressed that you can't pay for your kid's college. This can destroy your physical health because now you're eating at McDonald's every single day. If you do not have money, it can destroy all of this, but you can't have happiness without all of this. So you need to understand how money plays a part in your life. Money is just a tool. It doesn't make you a good person, it doesn't make you a bad person, but you need to understand how money works and how money plays a part in your life. That way you can use money to amplify your happiness. And the fifth lesson that wealthy people understand that the majority of people don't is how the wealth ladder works. See, the majority of people are focused on the corporate ladder. They want you to climb the corporate ladder, which looks like this. At the bottom, you have your laborers. These are the people that are your janitors, your cashiers, your blue collar workers. These are the people that are earning close to minimum wage, your laborers. Above that, you have what I call your workers. These are the people that go to college and you have a nice college job. You might be an analyst. You might be one of those people that's making, you know, your decent living. You have a good job. And now if you have this good job and you keep working up the ranks, you will make it up to the executive level. Now, we're talking about the big bucks. You're the one that's helping make the decisions for the company. You're the one that's thinking about how the company works. Your job is now to think instead of just to work and push papers. This is what most people think about when we talk about the corporate ladder. You wanna go from just your laborer, to a worker, to the executive, to the thinker. Because what wealthy people are trying to do is they're not trying to climb this corporate ladder they're trying to climb the wealth ladder. And so they understand what's going on here, but what they really want to do is they want to be this person right here. They want to be the owner. They want to own the corporate ladder. Just take a look at Coca-Cola. Who is the highest paid person by Coca-Cola? And most people are going to think it's the CEO, but that's not true. The person who is making more money than the CEO is the owner of Coca-Cola. In 2021, the CEO of Coca-Cola will make something around $17 million. A lot of money. His name is James Quincy, and he's going to make a lot of money because he runs Coca-Cola. He made it all the way up here to the executive level. But the person who is making more money from Coca-Cola than the CEO is the owner. Someone like Warren Buffett. He owns a lot of Coca-Cola, and in 2021, he will make something like $650 million in dividends from the Coca-Cola stock, and he didn't have to work a day at Coca-Cola. He didn't have to go out and manufacture any Coca-Cola. He didn't have to go out and tell the workers what to do. All he did is over the years, he owned and accumulated as many shares of Coca-Cola as possible. So he became one of the biggest owners of Coca-Cola. And because of that, when Coca-Cola pays out their dividends, he gets the big checks and he's not the one that's going to work every single day to run the company. So what wealthy people are trying to do is they want to become the owners, not just of companies, but of assets. We talked about this in the first part of this video, assets versus liabilities. Wealthy people want to be the owners. They want to own the means of production. They want to own the assets. That might be owning businesses. That's what Warren Buffett does. But you can also own real estate. Real estate can pay you with cash flow every single month because if you have an apartment complex, now these tenants are going to be paying you rent to live in your property. So there's a lot of different ways that you can be an owner. You can go out and you can own other businesses that you don't have to work in physically. So you want to be the owner, not just the person climbing up the wealth ladder. Now, there's nothing wrong with working a job. Job. Not everybody can start their own business, but what you need to do now is you got to understand, okay, if you're working to earn more money, why are you trying to earn more money? Most people want to climb this corporate ladder, that way they can go out and buy a nicer car, they can buy a bigger home, they can go on more vacations. I don't want you to think like most people. You need to think like the minority of people. When you're climbing the wealth ladder to make more money, the reason why you need to be making more money is so you can take this more money to buy more assets. When you buy more assets, these assets are going to be paying you more money every single month. And then you could take this more money that you're making from your assets to go out and buy more liabilities. So you need to know why is it that you're earning more money? 
This is where so many people get it confused. So you gotta understand the game. You don't wanna be the person that's just climbing the corporate ladder to earn more money, to buy nice things. You wanna be the person that's working hard to earn more money, to own more assets. We're gonna jump back into the show in just a minute, but first, here's an advertisement from our sponsor, me with Briefs Media. If you're looking for an easy way to stay up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business news, we make it super easy for you to do that at Briefs Media because we created a free newsletter called Market Briefs. Market Briefs is a super simple and easy way for you to stay up to date on the top finance and business news. You can read Market Briefs in less than five minutes every morning. It's a fun and witty and easy to read newsletter. And I promise if you join Market Briefs, you are going to love it. Now you might say, Jaspreet, how can you promise that I'm going to love Market Briefs? Well, if you don't love Market Briefs, you can unsubscribe at any time because it's completely free. So if you have not joined Market Briefs yet and you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business news, I got the link to how you can join Market Briefs down in the description below. Or you can go to briefs.co slash market. That's briefs.co slash market. And with that, let's go back to the show. If you want to manage your money like the top 1%, there are five and a half things that you need to do. And if you stick with me until the end of the video, you're going to know exactly how to do that. I'll show you. Number one, you have to build a foundation for your finances. I'll explain what that means. Number two, you have to build an investing system. This is where your wealth is going to be built through your investments. Number three, you have to build a conscientious spending plan with the money that you're generating. Number four, you have to figure out how you can grow your income strategically. Then number five, you have to figure out how to protect your assets. Every wealthy person puts a lot of emphasis here on their asset protection because as you make more money, people are gonna wanna take some of the money for themselves. And then number five and a half is you have to have the right mindset because even if you have all the financial education, if you have a broke mindset, it is going to be impossible, impossible for you to become wealthy. So let's dig in by starting by talking about number one, laying the foundation for your finances. The majority of Americans statistically do not have $1,000 saved up to protect them against an emergency. So what happens for the majority of people when you run into an issue, like your car breaks down, your window breaks, your kid breaks their arm, the majority of Americans have to then turn to credit card debt, which is why credit card debt has become such a big problem in the United States. And this is where if you want to be able to break out of this mess, of this system of constantly relying on your next paycheck to make yesterday's bills, what you need to do is start by laying the foundation. And I know this one's a little bit difficult because everybody wants to start by just investing their money. How do I build my wealth? Well, you can't do that unless you lay the foundation first. If you wanted to build a home, what would you do? You gotta first dig the foundation. If you wanted to build a tower, what would you do? You gotta dig a deeper foundation. So if you want to build your wealth up, you have to start by going down and lay that foundation for your finances. And what I want you to do here is first, I want you to go out and save $2,000 as fast as possible. And then once you save that $2,000, I then want you to go out and pay off your high interest debts. That means things like your credit card debts and your payday loans. And the reason why I want you to do it in this order, get the $2,000 first and then pay down the high interest debts aggressively is because if you pay down or you're working to pay down those high interest debts and then something happens, your car doesn't work or your AC stops working, what's gonna happen? You're working to pay down the debt, but then you find out your AC stops working and then you have to pay somebody to fix that with money you don't have, which means you end up deeper in debt. And that's why I want you to first work on aggressively working to save $2,000 as fast as possible. And the reason why you need to do this is because if you don't have $2,000 saved up, you're in what I call financial danger zone. So I want you to be extremely aggressive on this. That means no eating out of restaurants, no spending money on anything that you don't need in order to survive until you got the $2,000 saved up. Now, when you got this $2,000 saved up, what I want you to remember is this $2,000 is not money you're gonna go out and shop with. It's not money you're gonna go out and invest with. It's not money you're gonna go out and spend. This is $2,000 sitting there to protect you against something going wrong, against life's emergencies. Think of it like your uh, rainy day fund, your emergency fund, whatever you wanna call it. This $2,000 is money you have to put aside because the reality is life happens to everybody. And if you don't have some cash put aside, you're gonna be the one that's going deeper into debt to solve that problem. Once you've got the $2,000 put aside, now. I want you to stop saving more money and then I want you to take every additional dollar that you earn and aggressively pay down your high interest debts, your credit card debts, your payday loans, your whatever 0% APR loans that you didn't pay off in time. These are the things that I need you to pay off ASAP because when you're paying 15, 20, 25, 
30% in interest to your lender to borrow money, you will never have the ability to ever build wealth. When you invest your money into something like the stock market, you're trying to get a 7 to 10% return. That's the average historical stock market return. Well, if you're trying to grow your money by 7 to 10%, but then you have to pay 20 to 30% to your lender, it doesn't make sense for you to invest because all their money is going to make your lender rich. And this is where you have to stop making your banker and your lender rich. And this means you got to pay down the credit card debt as fast as possible. Now, there's a lot of different strategies that you can follow to pay down the credit card debt. You could follow the debt avalanche method, the debt snowball method. The debt avalanche method means that you're going to pay down the debts in order from the highest interest rate to the lowest interest rate. The debt snowball says that you're going to pay down the smallest debt balance first, and then you're going to slowly work your way up to the larger debt balances. I don't care which one you follow. All I want you to do is get aggressive in paying down these high interest debts as fast as possible because these debts are what is keeping you back from ever being able to build wealth because now anytime you make money, your money is going directly to the banker, it's going directly to the lender, and you're never going to have a chance to build upwards until you lay this foundation. So you got to figure out now how can you save the first couple thousand dollars and pay down this credit card debt as fast as possible. That might mean no more spending money. That might mean you got to sell your stuff. That might mean you have to sell your car. That might mean you have to sell your apartment or move out of your apartment or move out of your home and downsize. That might mean you have to sell your furniture. That might mean you have to sacrifice going on the vacation. That might mean you have to say no to going to that wedding. That might mean you have to say no to going to that bachelor party. There are sacrifices required to doing this. It is not going to be easy. You didn't watch this video thinking that it was going to be easy, did you? Maybe you did, but it's not going to be easy. It takes financial sacrifice because while everybody on the internet is going to talk about how I can make a million dollars without putting in any effort, the reality is that doesn't work. You have to be willing to make the sacrifice and put in the work, and the first thing you gotta do is build that foundation, which is bringing us to number two, which is now building an investing system for your money. What every single wealthy person does well is to pay themselves before they pay everybody else. And what that means isn't that you're gonna go to the Gucci store and buy yourself something nice before you go out and buy things for other people. What that means is you are going to invest this money to make you more money before you go out and spend all your money on things that lose you money. And in order for you to do that, what wealthy people do, and what I want you to do, is they create a system. They give jobs to every dollar that they earn. They know now, if I generate $1,000, how much of this money am I allowed to spend? How much of this money do I have to invest? And how much of this money do I have to save? They build a system like this, that way no matter how much money they earn, they're always investing some of their money, they're always saving some of their money, and they're spending whatever's left. The majority of Americans, what they do is they make money, they spend their money, and then if there's any money left over, then they might save it or they might invest some of it. But you want to flip this, and this is where you have to create a strict system, and this is difficult, especially when you're struggling with your money, because you might feel like, if I'm already struggling paying my bills, how in the world now do you expect me to start investing my money? How in the world do you expect me to start saving some of my money? I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. And this is where the way I want you to think of it is if tomorrow the United States government imposed a brand new tax on you, what would you do? You might kick, scream, complain, cry, but eventually you're going to figure out a way to pay it because you're going to have no other option because if you don't pay your taxes, you're going to end up in jail. Well, this is where you got to do the same thing. I want you to tax yourself. But instead of giving your money to the government now, you're using your money to make yourself richer. And this is where you can create a financial system that works for you. One of the things that I like to talk about is a 75-15-10 plan. This is a very simple way to start, and you can adjust this to whatever works better for you. But 75-15-10 says that for every dollar that you earn from here on out, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you invest, and 10 cents is the minimum that you save. And the best way for you to do this is to go to your bank, create three different bank accounts. And you wanna create three different bank accounts because if you keep all this money in one bank account, well, it's gonna be very hard for you to know how much of this money you're supposed to invest or save or spend. So I want you to create three different bank accounts and then create automatic withdrawals 
That way now, when you get paid, some of your money will automatically be pulled out of that first bank account and be put into a second bank account, which holds your investing money. And some of this money will automatically be pulled out of this first bank account if you put in your third bank account, which is your savings money. Now, you can't spend this money or this money because it's not in your spending account. And now when you don't see the money, you're going to be less tempted to spend it because this money can be automatically invested. This money can be automatically saved. And now the question is, well, what do you actually do to grow your money and build your wealth? Now, when it comes to savings, let me just start by talking about that. Because your savings are not there to make you wealthy. Now, I know a lot of us growing up thinking that you need to save your money, build as much of a savings cushion as possible because that's what's going to make you wealthy and secure. Your savings are not there to make you wealthy. Your savings are there to protect you against an emergency, period. Because the reality is, when you have high inflation, your savings get eaten away by inflation. And this is where now understanding that inflation has been around for a long time and it's going to continue to be around for as long as we can foresee. You want to save money to protect you, but not rely on your cash to be there to build wealth. That's what your investments are for. So when you save your money, you want to have somewhere between 3 to 12 months worth of expenses saved. And I know it's a big range, but it's going to depend on where you are in your financial situation. If you're 45 years old, you got a spouse, you got kids, you got other financial responsibilities, you got to take care of your parents, and you don't have a very high risk tolerance, maybe you need 6, 9, or 12 months worth of savings put aside to make you feel a little bit more secure. If you're 23 years old, you got your first job, you have no financial commitments, no financial responsibilities, you don't need to worry about having 6, 9, or 12 months worth of savings put aside. You can be a lot more aggressive right now because you're young. Now maybe you only need 3 to 4 months of savings put aside because now you can be even more aggressive with your investments. So the amount of money you save is going to kind of vary depending on where you are in your financial situation, in your life situation. But you have to keep working on building these investments because this is where your wealth is going to be built. Now, there are a couple ways for you to invest your money. This money can be automatically invested, or this money can be more manually invested. Like if you're investing into something like a 401k or an IRA, you might have automatic contributions. That can be a part of this, but I don't want you to solely rely on your 401k to retire or become financially free. Because what's going to happen for the majority of Americans is the majority of Americans are going to hit retirement and realize that the 401k wasn't enough. In fact, the founder of the 401k has even come out and said that the 401k has gone awry because so many people are relying just on the 401k to retire financially free. I do not want you to do that. So you can have automatic contributions to things like your 401k or IRA, but that's not enough. I also want you to continue investing your money on your own. Now, when you're investing your money on your own, again, this could be automatic or this can be non-automatic, manual. And that is going to be little bit more up to you on what is the right type of financial investment for you. If you want to just passively invest this money, automatically invest this money, that means now this money is going to be automatically pulled out and invested into your portfolio of stocks, ETFs, index funds, maybe it's real estate crowdfunded deals, whatever it might be. You might not even need a separate bank account for investment money because this money can be pulled directly out of this account and automatically invested. Or maybe you think, I want to be more involved. I want to find startups to invest in. I want to invest in businesses. I want to invest in stocks. I want to go out and invest in real estate. Well, now in order to do that, you might need more cash put aside. In which case now, you can start building and accumulating a cash pile here that would now, when you find a good investment opportunity, you have the cash to go out and invest. But the key is you have money to be invested. The way that you invest your money is going to vary based on your investing strategy. And there are so many different investing strategies. Like I invest my money passively. I invest my money actively. I invest my money in real estate. I invest my money into individual stocks. I invest my money into ETFs. I invest my money into startups. I invest my money into my own business. So there's a lot of ways that you can invest your money. And I'm not here to tell you, you got to invest your money this way because what works for you might not work for me. But the key is that you have to have this money being put the work to invest because this is what's going to make you wealthy. There's a couple of different ways that you can get paid with your investments. You can get paid with cash flow or you can get paid with appreciation, meaning I bought a stock for $100 and now it's worth $200 and now I can sell the stock and make a $100 profit. The majority of my investments 
are cash flow investments, meaning the majority of my investments, not all of them, but the majority of them are paying me with some sort of cash flow because I like cash flow. And the reason why I like cash flow is because when I have cash flow, I can get paid without having to sell my assets. So as you think about now, you investing your money, I also want you to think about how do you want to get paid? Do you want to get paid more with cash flow or would you rather see more of that appreciation and see more of a growth of the value of your investments? Neither of them are bad. You just got to figure out what's right for you. This brings me now to the third point here, which is what do you do with this money that you spend? Which brings me to number three, spending your money smartly. There's a running joke that I make when it comes to spending, which is that American people make a dollar to spend two dollars while indian people make a dollar to spend 20 cents and the reason why is because the cultures are very different and the mindsets around money are very different an indian person a traditional indian mindset person i can tell you this from experience because i grew up in a very traditional indian house you work to earn money to save as much money as possible. You will make $100,000 so you can live off of $30,000 a year and then save all that other money. But what you see happen with a lot of Americans, yes, I know I'm generalizing. If you're offended, you can leave this video. With a lot of Americans, you make money. That way you can finance it and spend even more with credit card debt and other forms of credit. And this is where now neither of them are right but you want to understand how to spend your money smartly. And what this means now is it is very easy to buy things, especially in America. You can buy things with credit cards. You can buy things with lines of credit. You can buy things with buy now, pay later, or as I like to call it, broke now, broke later. But the key is there's a difference to being able to afford something and being able to buy something. See, when most people think about being able to afford a new phone, they think, oh, I can make the $50 payments but you're not actually affording the phone. You are buying the phone. And so what I want you to do is start reframing that question of what does it mean to actually afford something? And the first thing that I want you to understand and remember is if this thing does not put money in your pocket, you should not be financing it, period. The only exception to this would be your house. Even when it comes to your car, I don't like financing cars. I do not recommend financing cars. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't recommend anything. However, financing cars means you're paying interest to drive around in a car that's losing value. Now, if you're making a ton of money, if you're very wealthy and you want to lease a car because you just don't want to have to deal with the maintenance and you want to keep flipping cars, fine. But you got to understand that when you're leasing a car, it's kind of like flying first class. You can get to the same place by flying economy. You're paying for that extra luxury. So if you can afford that extra luxury, fine. It's the same thing with leasing a car. When you're leasing a car, you're paying for that extra luxury. Anything wrong with that? No, but you're buying a luxury. You got to make sure you can afford that luxury. And if you're struggling with money, if you don't have any cash flow coming in, you don't got your dividends coming in, you don't have the financial foundation built, you should not be financing or leasing cars. And this is where right now I want you to go back to what does it mean to buy something versus being able to afford something. And a simple rule of thumb that you can follow, which I know is hard, especially when it comes to things that you don't need to survive, is to follow my rule of five, which says if you cannot buy five of them, you cannot afford one of them. Now, this means if you wanna go out and buy that same $1,000 phone, making the $50 a month payment does not mean you can afford it. If you want to be able to afford that $1,000 phone, that means you have to have the cash in the bank in your spending account to be able to buy five of them. You have to have $5,000 to go out and buy that $1,000 phone. And that means some of you might have to downgrade some of your purchases. Maybe that means you don't always buy the newest iPhone. Maybe that means you don't always buy the brand new Lululemon pants. Maybe that means you don't buy all that Gucci and you got to downgrade a little bit, which is difficult. But when you do that, you're going to have more money here, which can give you more money to spend here. And this means you can make even more wealth. And this is where, you know, it helps for you to kind of remember the difference between a want and a need. Because now you might be saying, but just breathe. What do you want me to do? I have to get to and from work. I need a car. Yeah, you need a car. You just want the BMW. You need clothes. You just want the Gucci. And this is where there's a difference between what you want and what you need. And this is what gets very difficult because that means you might have to sacrifice a little bit of the lifestyle. Now, I don't want you to permanently sacrifice it. The whole point of being financially smart isn't so you never enjoy your money. It isn't so you can never buy the nice things that you want. It's so you can afford the nice things that you want 
without having to worry about money, and without having to worry about the cost. But in order for you to get there, that requires you to make a sacrifice today, that way you can actually have the nice things and never have to worry about money. And if you make the sacrifice, what will be funny is you're gonna have to go through this kind of little slump where everybody around you has all the nice things, they're bragging about how much money they have, they see you not having the nice stuff, and they're gonna be kind of wondering what the heck happened to your finances, what happened to your household. And then a few years later, you'll see things start to flip. You'll see them struggling or talking about how much their bills are difficult and how they're struggling making the payments, and then you go out and start buying the nice things, and you don't have to worry about the price. Now, all of a sudden, you went from being the person that everybody wondered what the heck was wrong with them to being the person that people are coming to for financial advice. But that requires you to make that sacrifice and put in the hard work that most people are not willing to do. The fourth step to managing your money like the top 1% is now focusing on income growth. See, if you ask the majority of people today, what is stopping them or what's causing their financial issues? Every single one of them would say, I'm not making enough money. But what we have seen happen statistically is when the majority of Americans make the extra $10,000, they go out and spend that $10,000. Actually, they go and spend an additional $13,000 because now when you make the 10 grand, you can qualify for more credit on your credit card. You can qualify for bigger lines of credit. You can qualify for more money from the bank. And so people now make an extra 10 grand a year, but then they spend an additional $13,000 a year. Because now as you make more money, you gotta go on a nicer vacation, you gotta drive a nicer your car, maybe you got to upgrade that apartment or your home, you got to have the nicer appliances. And so now you make more money, but you end up in a deeper financial hole. That's why parts number one, two, and three were all about now money management. Number four is about money growth. And this is where now understanding that once you have this financial system working, you know how to save your money. Once you save your money, you invest this money right here. You know how to invest your money. Maybe you're generating cash flow. Maybe you're generating the appreciation. But you know you're always putting your money to work. You're investing your money before you pay yourself. And then you spend whatever's left. And now you realize, I just want to put some more fuel on this fire, baby. And now you got to figure out how you can grow your income. And this can be maybe a career change. Maybe this can be working harder in your job. Maybe this can be a promotion. Maybe this can be getting a second job. Maybe this can mean working on a completely new industry, figuring out a whole new job, a whole new thing that you can do. Or maybe this means starting a side hustle. Maybe this means starting a business. Now, if you talk about what do the 0.1% of people do or the 0.01% of Americans do, how do you build that much wealth? Well, now you're gonna have to work to build your own business because when you invest your money, what you're doing is you are growing the money that you have. And the reality is if you're making $50,000 a year, $100,000 a year, $500,000 a year, you can make a few million dollars and you can build millions of dollars worth of wealth and retire very financially free. But if you want to fly in private jets, if you want to have that very exotic lifestyle, you have to have way more money working for you. And the way that you can attract and accumulate that way more money is you're gonna to have to go out and take more risk. And in America, the number one way that has built more wealth than anything else is by going out and starting a business. Now, building a business is hard, it's risky and all that stuff. I'm not going over that in this video. However, what the 0.1% and the 0.01% do is all of them are business owners to some extent or capacity. Maybe their business is investing in businesses. Maybe their business is starting a business. Maybe their business is some sort of real estate development or investment, but you have to have some sort of business involvement if you wanna to get to that level. However, in any case, even to be part of the 1% now, it's all about now how do you grow your income? That way you can have more money to invest. And this can be a whole slew of opportunities, whatever you feel is right for you, but now you're working to earn more money smartly, that way you have more money to make you actually wealthier instead of just to drive a faster car. Number five is as you start building your wealth, you also wanna start investing in advisors that can help you protect your assets. Because as people realize that you have money, they're gonna to try to take their hands, put it in your pockets and take some of that for themselves as well. I'll give you a quick example. Earlier in this video, I told you that I invest in real estate. Now, while that's true, it's not exactly true. Let me explain why. Let me diagram this person with a nice mustache as me. And let's say this is a rental property that I own. Well, this property that I own is not actually owned by Just Breathe Sink. I actually own zero rental properties. They're just not under my name. 
And what that means is now this property isn't owned by just Breed Singh. Instead, it might be owned by an LLC. An LLC is a type of entity. It's a type of company that you can create. It's just a legal term. Your attorneys can help you with this. But now this property is owned by an entity. Let's just call it just Breed Singh LLC. Just Breed Singh doesn't own any real estate. Just Breed Singh LLC does. Now, Just Breed Singh owns Just Breed Singh LLC, but Just Breed Singh LLC owns this property. And the reason why this is important is because now let's assume that there's a tenant living in this property. They slip and fall and they sue the company for $5 million. Now, again, they can't sue me because I don't own the property. I just own the company. So they sued the company for $5 million. Let's assume this property is worth $200,000. Now, worst case scenario, insurance doesn't cover the claim. And then the judge says, well, this company, you were entitled to pay the tenant $5 million. Well, if the only thing that this LLC owns is this property and it's worth $200,000, you declare bankruptcy, the tenant gets the property. So the max they're entitled to is whatever is in this LLC. They cannot come after my personal assets, assuming it treat this LLC as its own business. I'm not using the LLC money to pay for my groceries directly. I have my LLC bank account and I have my personal bank account. If I treat this like a real business, that means the most that the tenant can take out of this LLC is whatever's in the LLC. And this is just one form of protection that you can have. And as you start to invest your money, as you start to build your assets, what you're going to want to do is build layers of protection because the reality is America is the most litigious country in the world. How do I know that? Well, I am a licensed attorney. So I can tell you from a little bit of experience that America loves lawsuits. Anybody can sue anybody for anything. And well, lawsuits are expensive, so you want to protect yourself. And one way to do that is to have things like LLCs in place. Now, it might not be an LLC for you. I can't recommend what you need because I don't know what your financial situation is. So this is where you want to have the right advisors. That means attorneys. That means tax advisors. That means estate planning attorneys. You want to have the right people on your team that can protect you and guide you, especially as you start building your wealth. And I know nobody likes paying for attorneys. Nobody likes paying for tax accountants. But these things, while they cost you a little bit of money today, they can save you a whole lot of money and a whole lot of headache in the long term. And as you start to build more wealth, you want to make sure you invest more money here as well. And then we have point five and a half, which is your mindset. And the reason why I always like to talk about this is because a lot of us, myself included, did not grow up with financial education. I grew up with a very negative attitude towards money and this whole idea of building wealth because in my household, it was this thing that like was taboo and bad, that rich people are bad and you shouldn't think about money that way. But at the same time, I saw how hard my parents were working to generate money. So it just didn't make sense to me. We're talking about how bad money is, yet you're going to work every single day to get money. You don't get breaks, you don't get days off. It doesn't make sense because if you had money, you could take vacations, you could take days off, you wouldn't have to stress so much about money. And that's where I started to think a little bit different about money. And I started to realize that money is just paper. It's just fuel. It amplifies who you are. You give a good person money, they have a tool to do more good. You give a bad person money, they have a tool to do more bad. And this is why we need more good people with money. And that means number one, you have to change the way that you look at money, but then also change the way that you think about wealth. Because if you don't grow up with wealth, it's very easy to create this negative connotation towards wealth because it's never something you've been exposed to. So it's, oh, it's that thing. It's those people's thing. It's this, this greedy, slimy person thing. It's this bad person thing because it's not something that you were associated with. But if you constantly have this negative connotation and attitude towards wealth and wealthy people, you're not going to want to actually achieve that yourself because we don't want ourselves to go out and be bad people, right? Like you don't try to go out and do bad things. You try to do what you think is good. And so if you think becoming wealthy is bad, even if you kind of subconsciously think that, you're going to change the way that you think, you're going to change what you do, and you're going to change what you receive. And so if you want to now actually become wealthy, you can't have such a negative attitude towards wealthy people and wealthy things you have to start asking the question of how did they become wealthy and how can I become wealthy and what do I need to do to achieve that wealth myself? Because when you start asking how do I become wealthy as opposed to, oh my God, they're wealthy, that's bad. Now you start asking the right questions and now you start opening up the way you think and you start opening up where you learn and you start opening what you do and that also starts changing what you receive. 
And this is where I want you to start working on your mindset. And this is, you know, there's a ton of content on YouTube and podcasts you can listen to. Start with some personal development education on how you can change the way you think. And even if you feel like you've never had this bad attitude towards money, if you've never really invested in your personal development or that, that kind of mindset education, just spend a little bit of time learning about it and see if you can start priming yourself to think a little bit bigger, to think a little bit wealthier, to think a little bit more abundantly, because that's just gonna help you achieve more. Because I'm not all about saying, oh, all you gotta do is sit there, think positively, and everything's gonna come to you. That's not what I'm trying to say. But you have to have this kind of positive attitude towards money if you wanna achieve it yourself, because you gotta know what to do practically, but you have to have the mindset that's gonna allow you to actually achieve it. Impressive. What I like to say is, until you do this, until you have these two things, you should not be worried about spending money, you should not be worried about what car you drive, and you should not be worried about having a Netflix subscription as well. And you might say, wait, 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 just what the heck are you talking about? Netflix is only like $15 a month. What do you mean I can't have a Netflix subscription? Well, the purpose for this 